Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about critical section problem. So already I have told that. So in the last video, we just discussed about uh, how uh, we are we are going to execute any cooperating process and what are all the problem we are just facing in cooperating process. So, so when we may get the incorrect final outcome, right? And uh, in order to avoid that incorrect result. So whenever any two process acts, tries to access the common data, okay. So we we should avoid that incorrect uh, result, right? So for that we are getting into the critical section problem. So what is that critical section? So the process which is uh, accessing the common data, so that part of the process which is nothing but critical section, that particular region, or we can also say that part of the code which is nothing but critical section. So whenever any process tries to access the common data, so it should follow some criteria or it should follow some generic structure of the critical section. So what could be the structure? So let us see. First one is entry section. Okay. And then critical section. So as I told, this is nothing but it's a part of the code or uh, par process which is uh, accessing the common data so that is what critical section and then exit section so which means it is going to enter into this critical section it represent it exited from the critical section and the remaining all other uh, part of the process which we can call it as a reminder section so this is what the generic structure we should follow whenever any process tries to access the common data which means it is actually entering the critical section and afterwards uh, coming out of the critical section which means it is stop accessing the common data it is doing some other uh, task or some other execution right so when you uh, talk about the critical section it should follow some uh, useful criteria in order to avoid the problem or the issues whatever we are facing in critical section first one is mutual exclusion and the next one is progress and the next one is bounded waiting. So what do you mean by mutual exclusion? So if suppose the first process P1 and the P2, there are actually two process and these two process trying to access the common data. Okay. So first the P1 process is accessing the common data which means it is in critical section. Okay, critical section is nothing but the part of the code which is actually accessing the common data that is what critical section. If it is accessing the common data then which means this particular process enters into the critical section. Currently it is in critical section. At that time P2 process cannot enter into the critical section. So each and every process will have their own critical section code. Isn't it? So this particular process may access this common data and this particular process will also access this common data. That particular code or particular part is nothing but critical section. So each and every process will have their own set of code for critical section. Currently if process P1 is executing or accessing the common data which means it, it is in critical section. Then the next process P2 or any other process which is trying to access this common data should not enter into the critical section. That is what mutual exclusion. So whenever you are executing the critical section problem, so this mutual exclusion must be satisfied. This is the first criteria. It must be satisfied. Next one is progress. So what do you mean by progress? If no process is waiting to access the common data, if no process, if no other process is actually waiting, but any one of the process P1 wants to enter into the critical section or tries to access the common data. So what happens here? Whichever the process that are, so we need to ensure that all other process are in the reminder section. Reminder section which is nothing but apart from the critical section, all other part is said to be reminder section. So we need to ensure that all other process are in reminder section. Then only we can allow this particular process to enter into the critical section. This is what progress criteria. And the next one is bounded waiting. So what do you mean by bounded waiting? So we need to allot some number of finite num uh, uh, some number of uh, times 
for any one of the process to enter into the critical section so say for example if p1 process tries to enter into the critical section so it is just access to this common data and it will come out of the critical section okay after accessing the common data it will exit from the critical section and next we are just giving chance to the process p2 to enter into the critical section suppose after coming out of this critical section uh, before the second process enters into the critical section again the same p1 process wants to enter into the critical section for the second time so what happens here if it is the second time so whoever uh, uh, gets the chance so we can allow that particular process to enter into the critical section even if process p2 does not tries it in that in between the time so the process p1 is again wants to enter then we can give the chance but it should not be repeated for uh, some number of times so we have to allot some finite number of times for any of the process to give or to get into the critical section because all other process uh, ha will be waiting for a long time right so we should allow any one of the particular process only for finite number of times to enter into the critical section that is what bounded waiting so these are all the three main criteria that we should follow whenever you are accessing any common data which means any process uh, more than one process or are trying to access the common data right so we are calling those as a cooperating process so for those cooperating process uh, coming to the critical section problem so we should follow these three main criteria then only we can overcome the in issues whatever we faced in critical section so the main issue is we are getting the inconsistent data in order to avoid it so we can follow these three criteria and the next one so if the operating system the design of the operating system has two main approaches so one is preemptive kernels and another one is non preemptive kernels preemptive kernels which are nothing but uh, while you are executing any even the kernel program if there is any interrupt occurs in the system or else the second process has the higher priority you, even the user process has the higher priority then automatically the cur uh, currently running process will be stopped and uh, the higher priority process will be given to cpu so which means the currently executing process will be preempted and the next process will be given to cpu for execution this is what preemptive kernels and if you go and execute non preemptive kernels okay so non preemptive means uh, until the execution of until the completion of the first process the second process will not be allotted at all that is what non preemptive so we cannot preempt any of the process in the middle of execution that is what non preemptive so in case of non preemptive kernels we uh, can overcome the critical section problem easily because we will not get the incorrect result if there is any simultaneous execution between any two process then only we will get that inconsistent result but if you obviously if it works under non preemptive kernel then we will not get that kind of uh, in i mean issue right we will not get that kind of issue so we will get that only in preemptive kernels and that too we have to follow all these criteria in order to avoid this um, issue so this is what about the critical section problem so what could be the general structure and uh, what are all the criteria that we need to follow so next we will discuss some of the problems under the same area thank you